Hello, back again to do another unboxing and review. Today we're going to look at something from Brino. This is a peephole viewer, um, namely the PHV1330, and I also have an accessory there on the side, which is the knocking sensor. Alright, so what is a peephole viewer, or sometimes called a digital door viewer? Well, it's a camera that looks through your peephole, much like your eye would if you put your whole head up against the door, and it displays that image on a screen. Now, why would anyone need this? Well, there's a couple reasons. First of all, convenience. Um, with a push of a button, you can see a, a real clear image of what's outside your door. And you don't necessarily have to put your whole body up against the door. Um, this might, if you have like small kids who can't reach the, the view hole, or perhaps some older folks sometimes have a hard time seeing through the little um, hole for whatever reason. And there's also another, uh, a security reason is um, if it's dark outside your door, um, the, you might not be able to see who's out there. And also, if they're trying to see if anyone's home, if you come up to the peephole, since you're inside, your house is probably lit up at the time, they'll be able to see someone's there. But just by the fact that from the outside, the peephole goes from being light to dark when, of course, you push your body up in front of it. So this uh, doesn't allow them to get that information. Okay, now you say, well, why would I get this one as opposed to the many other um, digital door viewers that are on the market? Well, this one is a concealed type. And what that means is that from the outside of your door, no one will know you have this. Now, the other versions, other models and makes, they have essentially a big camera unit that you have to put on the outside of your door, right? So you have a portion inside the screen, and then outside you have the um, camera. <laughs> Um, so with this, everything is inside. Now, um, let's go ahead and before we get to the knock sensor, let's go ahead and look at the main unit. So um, I'm looking at this box and I really like the way they did it um, because they have a lot of information on here. You see with little cute cartoons and everything, but they do cover a lot of information um, and it's not listed out in a kind of boring, dry way, but instead really to the point, um, with images to help you get an idea of what they're saying. But anyway, so let's look here. So um, you've seen this already, and again, they're talking about you have a three-inch bright LCD display. Um, you have enhanced brightness in low light environment, which I was talking about earlier. Um, this one has the option to record to an SD card, which loads on the inside there. Okay, now here, um, some of the stuff I was talking about, how small kids might have a trouble looking through a peephole, a normal peephole without this unit installed, and then the same with both the elderly folks, and then um, they're saying here that, you know, with the, without this, you kind of have a small view window, you know, because the, yeah, you can't see much through the normal peephole, and then this here is talking about that, um, People can tell your home by the darkening of the people, which I talked about already. Okay, um, so some things here. Uh, do it yourself. Three easy steps to install. Um, three inch bright, big bright LCD image recording with SD brightness enhancement. And then there's two um, accessories here. Um, this one, bottom one I have the knocking sensor, which we'll get to later. And then there's also a motion sensor option as well. All right. Now just looking at the box. It's a nice, oh, um, where is this made? So this is um, the Brino, at least this and the accessory that I have are um, designed in Taiwan and made in China. So, okay, and then the box of Brino. And by the way, um, so Brino's slogan is a uh, brilliant innovation. And I think that's where they get the name Brino. I think it's a combination of these two words, BR from brilliant and then the Eno for innovation. So Brino, all right. Um, but if you know otherwise, correct me in the comments. Okay, so how is this thing closed? It's um, essentially we have a circle sticker here, and the bottom is just uh, not not sealed. So I guess this is holding the whole thing in. And I'll go ahead and peel off the sticker and open it up. All right, so I got this sticker peeled up. I should be able to just slide it out. Yep. Okay. Alright, so upon opening it, the first thing we have is the instruction manual, warranty card, 
Okay, so the main unit is a little bigger than I thought it would be, but that's fine. I guess it's worth it to have the bigger screen. Now let's the back. Yeah, there's where your SD card goes. Micro SD card. On the side here, looks like we have some buttons. Uh, down, up for probably selecting the menu. And there also seems to be a little switch here. So, alright, and also um, the screen does come with a little screen protector installed. And of course, I always just leave these on. It's like a free screen protector. Why would you take it off? Okay, and um, let's open up the back here. Okay, so you remove that. There's where your batteries go. And then you'll see up here, and I bet you can guess what goes there, and we'll get to that later, but that's where the knock sensor goes, and you can see it connects to the system through some pins right there. See? Yep, okay. All right, now let's go look at what else comes in the box. On the bottom. Oh, there's some important things down here, okay. So we have this, which probably goes there. Some pads, I guess, to push up against the door or whatever. Okay, and here we have a few more things actually. Here is top quality, <laughs> but this is the actual peephole that comes included. Now on the box it said for the best results use this. Um, of course most doors already have a peephole installed and I suppose you could just go ahead and install this using your pre-existing peephole but evidently this one improves your results if used. So let's pop this open and see what's so special about it. Hmm. All right. Well, it's metal. <laughs> That's good. All right, so. Of course, this would be the side that's inside, and this is what you'd see from the outside. This is actually, um, on my current door, um, my peephole lens, I guess we'll say, is not this big. So perhaps this is a wider view or something. And I'm assuming, let me look through this real quick, but I'm assuming that um, perhaps the optics in here are um, tailored to work with this uh, device. So. Let's see how far it goes here. Wow. Yeah, so you get quite some, uh, I assume, since I haven't installed one of these before, I'm assuming this is to compensate for different thickness doors, perhaps? So yeah, if so, you got quite a few, quite a bit of travel there. All right, uh, I have looked through it, by the way, and yeah, it does have a pretty clear image, so that's good. All right. Um, Okay, we also have a washer. Perhaps to go around this. <laughs> um, this must be the tightening tool. And of course that is metal as well. All right, All right. and by the way, we do get batteries. And they're alkaline too, so that's good going. All right, that covers everything that came in the box. And um, let's now um, put this aside for a second and we'll go to the sensor. Here's the knocking sensor. Now, so what this does is when you, okay, you install this into the back of the um, PHV that you saw the slot for with the pins in there. 
and what happens is this thing detects vibration. So when this little guy here knocks on the door, this detects the vibrations and it sends a signal to your PHV to take a, a snapshot and it stores it to the SD card. So without this unit, um, if someone knocks and you're not there to push the button on the inside of your door, you won't know who was ever there. So this allows essentially to see who was coming at your door while you were gone. So here we go, accessory four. Of course, we already know that. This is dubbed as the KNS 100. So there, more information. Okay. So let's open it up. All right, so I'll open this one here on the bottom. Okay, so we have the manual and um, I guess, yep, warranty card. And then the unit, as you can tell, it's just a little sensor deal, but it comes in this nice little cardboard frame to keep it from rattling around the package. And, well, there it is. <laughs> and you can see here on the back, that's where the pins connect from the main unit. So, yeah. So, just do a quick. So, yep, boop, and there we go. All right, so I had a chance to look through the manual quickly, and there's a few things I wanted to clarify before we go on. So this little switch on the side, that's for the brightness enhancement, so on and off. All right, let's talk about um, the washer and this. So what's the washer for? The washer is if you have a 12 millimeter peephole on your door, you'll need to use the washer. If you have a 14 millimeter people, you will not. Okay, now let's talk about setting the date and time. To do that, you push this, turn it on, and then as you do that, you hold the up button for three seconds, and then you'll go to a, um, a menu where you can set the date and time, which is obviously important if you want to have record of when that person was at your door. Okay, um, and oh, how does this thing even attach, I mean, hold on to your door? I was wondering that. And how that essentially happens is you're, it's going to use this to hold it on. So, so if you're looking, you say this is the inside, right? So you're inside, and here's the door. So of course this lens will be coming in from the outside, right? And then you have that, and then you go ahead and screw this in. So, and of course then yeah, you, know, you have the unit right here. But this is what's going to be actually holding it on. See, so that's another function of this barrel and screw assembly is it actually serves as the hanger. And then when you want to put on the unit, um, it's kind of one of these, uh, put it on and then turn it into place. There's this little screw here and that's your to tighten it so that it doesn't, you know, rotate while it's on your door. Okay. Alright, so I got the batteries installed, I put in the SD card, I installed the knock sensor, and um, but of course at this point I don't have the um, lens or anything put on. So just the main unit powered up and ready to go. And if you see, it does in fact work, so if I push the button here... Oh man, it's an alien at the door! at here is a shot I took of the Brino unit installed on my door on the inside of course and the first thing I noticed upon getting it all set up and mounted is that although the unit felt a little bulky in my hands um, once I actually installed it on the door its proportions fall right in line and go to being I would say an adequate size in fact I don't think I'd want it much smaller okay. so here's the um, a view from outside so this is what your visitors will be seeing and um, this is the supplied lens that came with the Brino people viewer and it is bigger than the people viewer lens that came supplied with the door so but if you didn't know any different it looks like normal like you wouldn't notice anybody installed anything different because at least in my case with the door being colored the way it is the um, basil around the lens flows really nice with the color of the door so now let's look at the hallway here 
and this is a, a picture taken um, by the Brino people viewer. Um, it was obviously saved to the SD card, and I took that image and um, uploaded it here. So this is how it looks. Um, now this is a little clearer than you would see if you were actually looking at the screen, like if someone was at your door and you're using the Brino people viewer as a people viewer, um, the screen isn't quite this clear, but this is as clear as an image gets as far as the Brino is concerned. And um, okay, but you don't have anything to compare that to. So what I'm gonna do here is show you a picture I took using another camera, an action cam actually, and I took off the Brino people viewer, kept in the supplied lens, but there's no camera unit mounted, and instead I put my action cam up there and was using it like you would use your eye to look through. And this gives you a better idea of what the hallway actually looks like. Um, again, this image is coming through a camera, so it's not going to be nearly as good as if it was your actual eye, but I think it gives you a little bit be uh, better idea. Now, let's talk about the color you're seeing here. Everything's kind of tinted this bronze type color, and that's because I think the camera's picking up a lot of... Uh, I don't know, artifact from that um, basil that's around the peephole. And I think that's what's tinting everything, that kind of bronze color. However, know that it's actually a uh, real cool white. Okay, but now let's go back to the um, image from the Brino. And you can see that that light in the hallway um, gets, I think, overexposed is the correct word here. Or what um, photography people let me know if I use that term correctly. But um, you can see here that it's just on the image, it just pretty much dominates you get this big flash of light now this hallway is quite well illuminated but it's not that bright so um, just something to keep in mind now let's look at some of the images it takes right because that's the important thing here so the this image um, is somebody going by the door here and you can see that it um, blurs um, Easily, So if the person's moving and isn't just sitting there knocking, looking straight at the door, if they move quickly in any direction, you're going to get this blur. Okay, the next, uh, let's look at someone who's being a little more steel. Um, and yes, he's not a Martian. I did that. Um, greened out his eyes. To, you know, yeah, okay. So, but anyway, it's still enough to see um, what you can and can't see as far as clarity. And uh, yeah, I mean, I could probably pick him out from other people if they were saying who was it but it isn't as clear as I would like and at this price point which we'll get into later and the final thoughts on this is that yes this could be better but there it is so I've been using this system now for over a month and there's a few things I wanted to cover kind of day-to-day -day use type deals that I think might be helpful for in your decision if you're gonna get this or not so if you get the configuration that I have here the one with the knocking sensor in combination with the main unit be advised you're gonna have lots and lots of photos on your SD card now that in of itself is not a problem. After all, the photos are only 1.3 megapixel, so even if you're using the small SD card, you'll have more than enough room for photos on it, photos on photos on photos. So where's the problem? Well, the knocking sensor isn't so much a knocking sensor as it's a vibration sensor, one with real high sensitivity. So the knocking sensor triggers the PHV to take a photo if I don't know, you're locking your door, opening your door, closing your door, pushing your door, putting the keys in the door. You get the point. Essentially, anything that vibrates the door causes a photo to be taken. So you're probably still saying, well, what's the problem? Well, the problem is there ends up being so many photos that you kind of stop caring if there are new photos. And therefore, the time you really might have to check because, whoa, there was an event and I better go check to see what happened at my door. You're not going to bother because there's probably going to be 50 photos and you just, you know, it kind of starts to become not a, something of concern because there are so many of them. And that, I feel, really kind of lets the whole thing down. Now, how could that have been made better? Well, simple. If the knocking sensor was more directed, so only like knocks or maybe kicks <laughs> to your door triggered it. So maybe the sensitivity turned down or perhaps the sensitivity be more directed. So then you would know, okay, this is a photo I have to look at and not just yet another something touching the door. All right. The other issue is, well, the 1.3 megapixel camera. Uh, let's put this in um, perspective here. In 2007, my smartphone had a 2 megapixel camera. By the way, that was good for back then. Okay, so now we're in the late 2010s, almost into 2020, 
and we're using a 1.3 megapixel. Now, I'm not trying to be a spec snob and go, not high pixel enough, I want 4K. No, I'm not just being ridiculous, but let's think about it. 1.3 megapixel, it would have cost them hardly anything more to put in a 5 megapixel or something around that, around that level where the images might be more than just kind of useful, but might even be able to be legally as missable. As it stands now, unless the person is standing there perfectly still, like for a photo op, I don't even know if you could even use the photos for like a legal, you know, uh, if they'd be admissible. I just don't see enough clarity there. Um, your situation may differ. Who knows? You might be on a porch that gets great sunlight or whatever. But at least from my experience, yeah, it's just more for your information. But I don't think you could do much beyond that. And let's talk about the price point. The price point isn't dirt cheap either. So the kind of, well, you get what you pay for, that argument doesn't really hold up here because we're paying more than enough to get better than a 1.3 megapixel camera. So enough on that. So in the end, would I recommend this? Well, I have to say maybe or depends. If you have a security system in your house, you know, a lot they're becoming more and more common and they're getting more and more advanced control it from your smartphone and all that stuff and you have access to add more cameras just get a camera point it outside the door if you have, have a porch or something maybe put it in the window facing outside and forget this thing um, if you don't have that set up then you might need something like this and then in this case yeah sure go look at it you might want to shop around a little maybe get one that has a little better uh, camera in it and uh, but the one thing I can say this one offers that others most likely do not people viewers is that this is completely concealed inside unlike the other ones that put like a big camera module stuck to the outside of your door and um, yeah but if that isn't an issue or you don't care for that and you need the better resolution yeah I look at something else but hey Br Brino um, I like the ingenuitive idea and I think, yeah, if you had implemented this just a little bit better, um, it would be a must-buy.